What's up creators, Patrick here with the Let's Create series. Today we start episode number one on the Roblox card game and today we're going to create our project and work on UI components, size, and positioning. So we're going to add a text button and a frame to screen GUI. We're also going to work on the UI component size and position and discuss scale versus offset and how using scale will allow us to uh, place and size these UI components so that they work on desktop and mobile. If you don't already, go ahead and open Roblox Studio. And then we're going to create a new game. So we'll click new and base plate is just fine. So we'll click base plate. The first thing we're going to do is change the color of this base plate. And so I'm going to use something uh, sort of green. Um, and so I'll expand workspace over here on the right and I'll select base plate and then after selecting that, we have the properties at the bottom right. And I'm going to change the color here from this gray color to some kind of green. I don't want it to be super bright, uh, but somewhere around here looks great to me. And I'll press OK. OK, another thing, I don't really want the uh, studs in here. So I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom on surface. And I'm going to change these studs on the top surface to smooth. And that'll get rid of those studs. And I also want to change the material. So I don't really want it to be plastic. I'm thinking maybe I want it to be grass. And now that we added grass, it got darker. So I'm going to change that green again to just be a little lighter. And I'll press OK. So we've changed the base plate. It doesn't look like that normal studded place. Um, we're not using terrain, so uh, we still get the appearance of grass without um, having to deal with all the terrain. Um, so that's good. And now what we can do is start working on some UI. So to get started on UI, we're, go we're going to find the starter GUI over here in our, in our Explorer, and we'll press the plus. And we want to add a screen GUI. And now that we have this screen GUI, this handles all GUI for the player. Uh, now we can press the plus on the screen GUI and we can start adding frames and buttons and things like that. And so I'm going to add a text button. And that text button is going to show up at the top left and we want it to pretty much be at the bottom right. Um, so what we're going to do is select this text button in the starter GUI screen GUI text button that we just added. We're going to select that and we're going to head down to properties. And now in properties we can scroll up a ways and I must have collapsed data, but um, expand it back out. And we can see it has this position property. So this position is in relation to its parent and its parent is just the whole screen GUI. So that's fine. What we'll do is change its X. Um, we're going to make it scale um, pretty much all the way to the right. So X is horizontal and Y is vertical and zero, zero is the very top left of your screen. Um, and so scale, a, a one value here, will be 100%, so it would move it off the screen. So if we change this to a one and press enter, we can see that it's all the way off the screen. We don't really want that, so let's change it to something like 0.8. And so that'll move it almost to the all the way to the right, uh, but definitely further away from the left, and so that's good. And on Y, we'll use the same value on scale. We'll just do 0.8, and that'll move it almost all the way down. But we can see that it's not really in the bottom right corner, and we do want it to be in the bottom right corner. Um, and so we have a couple options here. The first one is to change these scales so that they are all the way to the off the screen. So if we do a 1 for X and a 1 for Y, it'll send it all the way to the bottom corner. And then we can use a hard-coded offset, like, um, you know, negative 100, and that'll pull it to the left. And then a Y offset of something like negative 50, and that'll pull it up. And we can see how it'll, it'll stay that many pixels off the bottom right. So when we change the viewport, that button will move as well. So that's one way we can do it. The other way is to adjust those scale values so that, um, it kind of stays at the bottom right no matter what. And I like to do that more because then the button size will scale as well. Um, and everything kind of uh, keeps their aspect ratio. So I'm going to get rid of these negative values and leave them at zero. 
and these ones will change as well. So instead of it being a one, um, 0.8 seemed to not be good. So we'll do something like 0.88 and see how that does. Um, and I can see it's almost all the way to the right. So that's good. If we use that 0.88, that leaves about a, you know, a 12% or a 0.12 um, from its top left corner to the right of the screen. Um, so that's good. That actually looks okay to me. Um, so scale, everything starts. So zero, zero starts at the very top left. So that'll put it all the way up here at the top left of your window. Um, and some value like one, one in scale. So 100%, um, one, one, um, a one on X is a hundred percent of X and X is horizontal. So it'll start from the left and it'll go all the way to the right. And it's a hundred percent of the viewport. So a one puts it all the way to the right. And then a one in the Y scale puts it all the way to the bottom. So we have this Y scale of one already. And that's why this button looks like it is off the screen. So we're going to change this Y value to like a 0 0.8. 0 0.8% is 80%. And now when we look at this, we can definitely tell that that's way too high um, or not down far enough. And so what we'll do instead is change this to something like 0.9 and see what that looks like. And now we can see that put this button down here in the bottom. So I'll highlight this button again, and I'll scroll down to the position and we can see that scale is 0.88 on the X and uh, scale is 0.9 on the Y. So that'll get our button positioned. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is go to size. So size is hard coded. It is hard coded in offset. So it's just a, it's always going to be 200 and it's always going to be 50. 200 wide, 50 tall. The reason that's not good is because if we move this over to mobile, you can click this little, um, it looks like an iPad and an iPhone at the top right. Once we click this, we'll see that that button is gone. You, it, it's, it's still 88% of the width of the phone, but 200 pixels is just too big for a phone. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is change that from offset to scale. So instead of 200, we'll change this to zero and our button will disappear because it has no width now. Uh, but we'll change scale to something like um, 0.12 would send it the, the in remaining width of the screen. So we don't want to do 0.12. Um, let me show you. So if we do 0.12, um, that'll put it on the edge because its position is 0.88 and that leaves 0.12 until we reach 100%. So instead of 0.12, let's leave some space on the side. So we'll just do 0.1 for the X size, the X size, the size X scale. So size X scale, 0.1, offset zero. So that looks good here. Um, now we need the, the Y scale. So let's turn that offset into zero again. So Y offset zero. And now we want Y scale to... Uh, we can do something like 0 0.08. So we can do 0 0.1 to show you what will happen. Uh, since we have it positioned at 0.9 down the screen, if we do 0 0.1, it should fill up the remainder of the screen as we expect it does. And so instead of that, maybe we only want it to be half of this. So instead of 0 0.1, let's change the Y scale for size to 0 0.05, which is half of 0 0.1. And that'll make our button look pretty good. And now when we head over to that mobile view, we'll see that that button sits here at the bottom right, just where we want it. So the same on mobile and the same on desktop. So that's perfect. So, so far our UI supports both you, you know, mobile and desktop. All we have is one button, so it's not, um, you know, too super complex. But uh, the next thing we can do, which you probably noticed is the text on button is very small on this desktop, but when we change it to the mobile view, that text is enormous. And so how we get around that is if you click this text button from the Explorer and we scroll down, there's some uh, properties here under text. And one of them is text scaled. What text scaled does is it ignores this text size and it just fills it according to how much space is given by the button. So if we check this text scaled, we'll see that it got a little bit bigger here on mobile. 
but if we go back to desktop view, we'll see it's also big. It's not just a small bit of text anymore. Um, so that's really helpful for making your buttons visible um, and bold on all platforms. So that's something we really want to do. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is change the text. And we'll notice that when the more letters we use in the text, the smaller the font will get because this text is going to be scaled. So when we change button to something like um, find game, right? Find game has more characters, so the font size will go down. Oh, if it was a little more characters, like so, like find a card game, right? Find a card game. Now it gets smaller because it's going to fit all of that text into the button because text is scaled. So we have this text button. We're going to change find a card game. Um, I'm going to change that back to find game. So we have find game. That's awesome. Uh, and the next thing we want to do is make some frames, right? So we need a frame uh, that when we click find game, it will open so the user can interact and, and find a game. Uh, before we would do that, it's good to always give um, your UI elements uh, a name. So we have this text button here and we want to change its name. So all I did was double click it. So you can click it once and then click it again and you should be able to edit this. And so I'm going to name this um, button. I always like to name um, what it is first because then when we access it in code, if we don't know the full name, um, we can just type button and it'll filter out and just give us a list of things that um, are possible options, right? So I put button or label, um, but then I name it. So I have button and then I'm going to put find game. And so on every letter of the first word is going to be capitalized. So it's going to be button, find game. And that's a capital B, capital F, capital G, all one word, no spaces. So we have button find game. That's good. And the next thing we need to do is just over screen GUI, we're going to click the plus and we're going to add a frame. And so this frame, we're going to change its name. I'm going to leave the word frame, um, but this is going to be frame find game. So I'm going to add find game behind the name frame. And then we need to position this in the middle of the screen. Um, so we can do that the same way we did the button using the X and Y scale. And then we're going to change the size to make sure we continue to use X and Y scale, not offset. So once you have a frame there, so you just click the plus next to screen GUI and then click frame. And then I just renamed it to uh, frame find game. So once you have that, make sure it's highlighted in the Explorer. And now we're going to move it from the top left over to the center of the screen. And so we can do that by going to the properties here and scroll down a little. And my position is already expanded uh, because I was working on it with the button. Um, if yours isn't, then go ahead and expand position and expand X and Y. So we're going to see X and Y. Um, everything is zero and that's okay. Uh, but what we want it to be is um, let's, let's just, you know, kind of plan it out with our mouse. So we want this thing to, uh, pretty much take up about half of the available width of the screen. So we know the size is going to be about 50%. Um, that leaves us 50% of unused space. Um, so what we can kind of do with that information is say, um, you know, if we have 50% of frame, then where do we position it to make it center? Well, if you have 25% on each side, right, being the other 50, then we need half of that. Um, so if we take, um, X scale, right? X, uh, position X scale and do 0.25. That's going to put this thing 25% of the screen. And now we want its width to be 50% of the screen. So I have position X scale 0.25. I'm going to scroll down a little to size. And this one also has offset. We don't want offset. Uh, but we will change size X scale to 0.5. And then I'm going to change that offset to zero. And that'll make this thing exactly 50% of the available screen. Again, the reason why I'm doing this is once we go to mobile, we'll see that it still takes up 50% of the screen. And that's what we want. We want this game to work on mobile and on um, when people play it on their tablets and when they play it on their computers. We want it to work everywhere. 
So I'll go back to desktop view. I'll re-highlight this find a game, uh, frame find game, and then we'll work on Y. So the position Y scale, um, let's see, 50% is probably not big enough. And let me show you what I mean. So if we do 0.25 on position here and like uh, 0.5 on scale, it's I don't think it's big enough. Maybe it is big enough. I'm going to check it on mobile. Um, yeah, you know what? I think it is big enough. So what we'll do is I will um, kind of go over what I just did. I was just checking to see if that was big enough. I think it will be. Uh, so with find uh, frame find game, we'll go to position Y and we'll change scale to 0.25. And then on size Y, we'll change it to 0.5, just like the X values. And then we'll get rid of offset. So the offsets on all of these are zero. And this will allow it to grow and shrink as the screen size grows and shrinks. So that'll take care of that. That's our frame find game. And one thing I really like to do is add, um, the, they're called module scripts. And I'll explain these scripts a lot more in detail. But I like um, to have these kind of, state managers as module scripts so that um, it handles its own frame and everything and you can just reference it in another script and it'll take care of all of the heavy lifting so that might sound confusing now i'll show you what i mean here in a second but for now we're just going to hover over frame find game and we're going to add a module script so now we have a module script here we're going to change its name it can be anything really. Um, I'm just going to say frame behavior, I guess. Um, frame find game behavior. So frame find game behavior. And that's only, it doesn't matter what you name it because they'll be, they'll have different parents. But once you have a bunch of scripts up here um, and you're working on a bunch of different scripts, uh, it becomes a nuisance when they're all named the same. Okay, so we have a module script in here. That's great. Um, now we can head back to the base plate and now we can see we have our frame here and now we need to add some things so we need to add um, maybe these two panels so one will be scrollable and it'll uh, maybe show all the available games that other players have created and then the other panel will be um, how they can create their own game so we need to be able to find a game. We need to be able to create a game. And that'll all be in the find game frame or frame find game. So that'll do it for episode one. A short little introduction to the series. And we got a couple UI components laid out. We worked on their size and position. Uh, it's just the, the text button for find game and the find game frame. But it's a good start to the game. Uh, next time we're going to work on the other UI components that go in that frame find game. So we, like I mentioned in the video, we have that scrolling frame on the left and uh, just another frame on the right for um, creating a game and actually joining a game that other players have created. So, so we'll get into that next time. Thanks for watching today. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.